Hi, I'm Adam Porter and this is my board gaming vlog and today we're talking a little bit about collaboration and co-design. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll be introducing you to my co-designer Rob Fisher who worked with me on the game Quuzzle. And we're going to talk about Quuzzle, uh, how the game came about, what it involves, uh, how we pitched it to publishers, all that sort of stuff. So really how Quuzzle went from uh, an initial idea through a co-design collaboration process to pitching it to publishers and to its eventual release. So let's start off by showing you how the game works. In Quuzzle, each player has a set of nine identical cubes and a tray. Six pattern cards are revealed and players race to place their cubes onto the tray in an attempt to incorporate as many of the patterns as possible. After one minute, players will score one point for each card that they've successfully fulfilled. However, sometimes it's not possible to fulfill all six cards. If a player ever thinks that they have scored the highest possible score for the round, they may grab the timer and lock in their answer. If they were correct and at the end of the minute no player has bettered their score, then they gain one additional point. But if they were wrong and another player has beaten them, then they lose one point. The player with the most points after five rounds is the winner of the game. The game features advanced cards which tell you exactly how many cubes you must show of a particular colour or dictate that you must have an equal number of two different colours or maybe a different number of two different colours or maybe they indicate that you must have a particular colour in every row or in every column or they might just feature some more challenging patterns on the cards. The extreme cards do away with the grids and force you to solve the puzzle within a much more challenging shape. And the game also features a solo mode where you attempt to beat your highest score. Okay, so now you've seen what the game is, I'm going to introduce you to my co-designer, Rob Fisher, and we're going to have a little bit of a chat about the game. Okay, so let me start off by introducing Rob Fisher. Uh, Rob is the co-designer of Quuzzle, uh, and Rob and I run a, a weekly playtesting group in Cardiff, um, where we play each other's designs and other people's prototypes as well, uh, on a sort of weekly basis. So, uh, hi Rob. Hello, thanks and for having me. <laughs> right. And Rob and I, we started, when did we start co-designing stuff? Um, well, we'd been running the playtest group for quite a few years, probably three or four years, um, before, I think, is, is it my dragon prototype? Was that the first thing we started talking about together? Um, there, there was definitely a point where I had several designs on the go and I felt stuck with them. I, I'd reached sort of hurdles that I, I didn't quite know how to get jump over. Um, and there was one particular week, normally the group is pretty well attended, but I remember one week where it was just you and I in the pub and um, it seemed like a good time to sort of broach the subject as to whether you would consider working as a team on, on some of these uh, projects. Do you think you broached it with me or did I broach it yeah. with you? I, well, that's, that's my memory, but memories I, are funny things, aren't they? Maybe, maybe I was running short on ideas and, uh -huh. and I knew that you had some good ideas and thought, well, I seem to be, you know, able to get meetings with publishers and getting stuff made and things, whereas Rob seems a bit stuck with progressing some of his. So maybe this could work quite well, these two things together, the fact that I need yeah. some more inspiration and Rob needs some more, I don't know, motivation or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you certainly had a foot and still do, I think, have a foot much more firmly in the door when it comes to publishers and how the industry works. Um, I think, uh, although I'm interested in that, because my time is pretty limited with family and things like that, um, it's something I've not got so involved with. Um, and that's certainly a, a huge benefit of um, working with you is that I, I get this uh, huge living database of knowledge um, about all the latest games, all the publishers, who's doing what, what's trending. Um, and that, that is just massively helpful, definitely. Um, and yeah, I, I think when I'm, when I'm in the right frame of mind, I do tend to have more ideas than I know what to do with. Um, and so it's useful having um, a co-designer, a partner, so I can sort of bounce those ideas off and see which ones interest you. Uh, they're, they're likely to be something that interests more people than just me. There, there, there might be something to that idea. 
Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, so our first published uh, design was Quasel. Now on screen, this may be backwards. Looking at my screen, it looks backwards. I don't know how it'll look on the recording. Um, but so so Quasel was our first published um, uh, published design. Mm. So uh, it came out. When did it come out? Like last Christmas, I guess. Yeah, just before twenty twenty or end of two thousand nineteen. I think the first copies were at the very end of 2019 and then there was the London Toy Fair at the beginning of 2020 that was so I was showing it off to retailers and things like that at the beginning of 2020 and unfortunately it's that awkward timing where we just go into the lockdown soon after that uh, and as a result it's kind of well who knows whether Mr. Quasel will get its uh, you know real its moment in the sun because it's uh, it came out just at that awkward point. Uh, so, so tell me about Quasel. What, uh, what do you think the sort of strengths of Quasel are? Um, things I love about Quasel are that it's, it, it is very simple to learn. Um, I think uh, we, we often had times when we were play testing it in the pub and someone who hadn't seen the game before, they peer over your shoulder and within 30 seconds, they, they, they know what you're doing. They, they can see how the puzzle works. And uh, that is great. I like the fact that it's always different. Um, and it's also a very versatile puzzle. Uh, you can modify the difficulty of it. Um, we, part of the design process was deciding what level of difficulty we should, we should sort of aim for. And that, uh, came out of a lot of play testing. Um, I tried to play test with uh, a wide variety of people. Um, I play tested my daughter who was five at the time and found that by simplifying the game, making uh, using fewer cards, removing the timer, she, she got it. She really enjoyed the game. She enjoyed the puzzle. Um, so yeah, the, the, the versatility of it. But uh, for adults, what about the game for adults and older people? Yeah, that, that was really interesting. When we started playtesting it, when, when the game was basically locked down, how the mechanics were going to work, I remember we, we'd put out the six cards, we'd start the sand timer, there'd be three or four of us maybe trying to solve the puzzle. And it was a real stretch. We, we sometimes didn't. We sometimes got to the end of the 60 seconds and we'd got, I don't know, two or three. Um, certainly hadn't got all six. And over the weeks, it's like a, a sort of form of brain training, I suppose. You, you acquire the skills, you rehearse those skills of how do I solve this puzzle? How do I prioritize the order of uh, the cards? Uh, you, you start to notice which cards are difficult and which cards are going to cause incompatibilities. Um, and yeah, within, within a month or so, we were easily solving all six cards. And by the time we were showing it to publishers, games could be finished within sort of 20 30 seconds um so some of the play testers were really exceptionally good at it um much better than uh, me definitely um i found yeah. it strange going from uh, you know play testing it a lot and sometimes you know we'd play test it with the same people often and then you'd find they'd get really good at it and then going to the london toy fair and showing it to you know to to adults and retailers and things like that and then find good you know, trying to do this puzzle and go, oh, my, it was, you know, their mind was blown. <laughs> how, yeah. how, how do I do this? How do you know? And I was thinking, well, surely this is easy. <laughs> Just because we'd, uh, we'd spent so much time with, with, with the game at that point. Um, so going back to the beginning, uh, this was an example of a game where you had a, a game, which was a functioning yeah. sort of game, wasn't it? Using tiles. So, uh, yeah. so it was a sort of two dimensional puzzle but it still had that modular puzzle aspect of laying out different aspects yeah at that point the tiles obviously only have a, a top and a bottom so each piece was was only flippable um and it was when you came to me and said that, that you could see an, another way a way to develop the game a little um and it was your suggestion to move from tiles to cubes and the, the that came from i had a few I was getting quite a lot of contacts from uh, mass market type publishers off the back of um, Picoco, another one of my games that had won some awards and looked very much like a toy, although it was a bit complex for a, for a toy. Uh, but also Doodle Rush and Big Bazaar were quite, um, 
you know, almost mass market style games, simple games. And so I was having these publishers approaching me and I, I decided that I wanted to try and design a little more in that sphere and, and target this game, some games towards the mass market. So um, I thought Rob's game had the potential to become a bit more mass market if we could make it a little bit more three-dimensional, a little bit more toy-like, a little bit more tactile. And so uh, I suggested incorporating the cubes into it so that it was more than just flipping, but we were actually rotating and, and, and trying to find the right surface. Uh, almost adds a dexterity element to it as well. Um, and, and then we've got something sorry, uh, that kids are, are drawn to. They, they want, and, and adults, they see the cubes, they've got these beautiful colours and patterns on each side, and they, you want to pick them up and you want to rotate them and manipulate them. Um, it, it makes the puzzle more joyful uh, to solve, I think, than, than it would have been with just the tiles. Yeah, yeah. And then we hit the uh, this sort of dilemma about, well, when you lay out your six cards, some of these puzzles you can complete all six of those cards, all six patterns, you can fit it in the grid and feel great about it when you've achieved it. You know, I've achieved all six before the other players, great. But there are some puzzles where actually a couple of those patterns, they don't work together and you can't complete all six of those patterns. Um, so so I, I remember we did quite a lot of work around that area and trying to work out how to make that a feature of the game rather yeah. than feeling like it was a, a sort of oversight of the game. Yeah, I, I remember when playtesting that initially you'd be busily working your way through the puzzles and it, it felt like a, a bit of a, a shock. Oh gosh, these, I can't do these two together. Um, but as your skill with the game improves, you gain that ability to see which ones are incompatible. And it actually allows you to sort of take shortcuts, essentially, because you can go, well, those two can't go together. So I'm definitely going to only do one of them which of them pairs up with the most other cards and you get remarkably good at um at that sort of level of insight as to which are the five that i can solve and which which one has to be relegated to the, the scrap heap and that was became really satisfying um I, I certainly really enjoyed being able to see that and, and we got feedback from other um play testers that they enjoyed that feature as well being able to read all the cards and it became an aspect of the race, didn't it? Because you, as soon as you spotted, you'd done as well as you possibly could, even if that was four of those puzzles or five of those, those, those patterns. Um, if you felt like, actually, I think nobody could beat this, you can't beat a score of five, then you would grab the timer and lock your score in. Um, and as long as you were right, you would get a bonus point for doing so. But if you were wrong, you would lose a point for doing so. Uh, and I, 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 that, that was quite a satisfying sort of when I think when we happened upon that sort of mechanism, I think that was quite a satisfying moment to, to, to sort of think, ah, do you know what, this has become a feature of the game where previously we found it a bit of a sort of like a problem that we were trying to solve. Yes, definitely. And the, the timer aspect is, is interesting. We, we found um, in the playtest group that people became very competitive. And as I say, by the time we were, we'd all sort of graduated to be experts, games were being solved in, in 20 seconds. But there's still that moment of, I've solved it. Do I spend the time double checking it? Or because if I don't grab that timer now, someone else, I've got like a second or two seconds to make that decision as to whether to, to grab it. That's one of the major, actually, that is one of the major features of Quuzzle, that, that dilemma of, do I double check my work? <laughs> or do yeah. I just assume that I will have done fine? And then, and then you think, no, I haven't got time to double check. I'm grabbing that timer. And, and then, there's, of you course, know, uh, really advanced level play where you, you, you do a feint. You go as if you're going to grab the timer, which causes another player to panic and snatch it up when you, you know that uh, they've made a mistake. Oh, that's high level play there. Right? <laughs> high level play. Okay, well, and then we, we showed, uh, well, I showed uh, the prototype to Gavin Ucko at uh, Happy Puzzle Company at the UK Games Expo. Um, that was, uh, what, May or June 2019. And he, um, he absolutely loved it. He was so enthusiastic about it. And that's, I mean, it was, I hadn't really met, I hadn't met this company before and I hadn't met Gavin before, but, you know, this is a major part of, uh, 
of, of deciding on which publisher you want to go go with really with uh, the, the amount of enthusiasm they have for the game is so important and Gavin was really really enthusiastic um, and in fact he, he I think he pushed other projects to the side to make sure that this one was out by Christmas you know and uh, and so we pushed on very very quickly with it and got it to market much quicker than any publisher I've ever worked with so that was I great. think that that was a real surprise the the speed with which they were able to turn the project around I guess with some of our other projects, um, you, you know that even when it gets signed, it's going to be a year, two years, maybe, possibly even longer before it, it comes out, and, and there's that sort of waiting time. With Quasel, it it just it just happened. <laughs> Every yeah. month there was uh, suddenly the, the the artwork was there. This is the box mock up. Uh, we've got our first prototype has come from the factory, and yeah, the, the fact that it was on sale in time for Christmas was uh, astounding, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we we designed another game together around the same time, another sort of mass market style game. Um, and that one was signed with a publisher, I think before Quasel was, but yeah. still still not out yet. And that's normal. You know, that's that's a normal sort of time scale. But uh, so hopefully, hopefully next year uh, we'll see that game come to market, depending on COVID, I suppose. But uh, yeah, Happy Puzzle really moved quickly um, and, and did a great job with it. It's a, a lovely product. So, um, right. Well, thank you, Rob. Uh, that's fantastic. And um, Rob and I also designed the game Compromat together, which has recently come out. So uh, we're going to talk about that in another video. If you're interested in getting hold of a copy of uh, Quuzzle, it's available through the Happy Puzzle Company web store. Uh, it's also available, at least in the UK, on Amazon. I don't know about worldwide. You'll have to check for yourself on that. And it's in any retail outlet that stocks Happy Puzzle Company games. I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe you are interested in co-designing yourself or collaborating with other designers. Um, so I hope it was interesting and useful. If so, please watch some of my other videos. Uh, I've got loads of videos about game design uh, and, and, and game reviews and games that are just games that I like and chatting about games on my YouTube channel, Adam's Board Game Wales. So please subscribe to that. Please follow me on Twitter at Board Game Wales and on Board Game Geek and Adam78. Thank you very much for watching. All the best.